Another edition of Watchlist Wednesday. We're talking all TV news, breaking it down for you. We start off with Succession. It's a show we've been talking about. Uh, we, we caught up to it. I feel like everyone else out there is doing the same thing. The finale was... Uh, Let's talk about it. Let's, Kevin, let's, let's break it down because think... Succession has been a pretty explosive show to begin with. A lot of like heavy shit. There's drugs, there's power, there's money, there's sex. It's not, you know, an easygoing show, nor was the finale. No, the finale, everyone I think really seemed to like it. It was too nice a bow for me. A little too neat, where it was, I mean, I guess it kind of, you can kind of work it because. It literally happened. Mm -hmm. Like Chappaquiddick happened. It's happened so, before. So that trouble accident. bridge, somebody dies. He, I mean, high-powered people. If you're in a situation where someone you don't really care for is about to die and you're gonna go down with it, you're out of there. Yeah, fucking out, <laughs> real quick. Me, you, him, hurt. We're all doing the same thing. But I thought it was just a little, Ted little Kennedy, too that neat shit. with like his key card stayed there and shit like that. And Logan came to save the day. I, it was good. It sucks seeing Kendall lose because Kendall is such a flawed character, but you're you still he's so flawed, man. It's hard to root like, for him because you know he's gonna fuck it all up. You're like, dude, just stop being a pussy. Stop doing ketamine. Stop <laughs> doing meth. Yeah. It's like you're trying to take down this like high powered badass. You can't be doing meth, okay? It's I mean, addiction's a problem. I understand that, but it, like you're just like, dude. It's like it always reminds me of watching Flight. You mm -hmm. ever see Flight with Denzel? Denzel? Mm -hmm. And I watched it on a Sunday night one time. And like I, w I already had the Sunday. Stories. That'll give you the scary. Real quick, like, dude, stop drinking! Holy shit! <laughs> like, it was like I kind of have that when I'm watching Kendall. I'm like, dude, just don't just, have that just drink. Just give you it can't a rest. Have that drink. You're not the kind of person who can have a fucking drink. Stop. Yeah, you um, can't just do one. But it's it's tough. It was tough. I, I guess it again since it happened in Chappaquiddick. I guess it works. But I, I also just it take, was a little too neat. It was a little too much like everything perfectly worked yeah, out for you, Logan. Yes, that's the thing though. Like that is kind of how I think this is always gonna work out. Like you ain't gonna beat Logan. But like I don't I don't like more so than how it played out on the episode, I don't like how it sets up next season. What like, that is I, I would have I would have preferred next season to be the whole season the battle. Well, it still might be. You never know. I mean, right now it seems like he's got him by the balls, but I don't think Kendall's just gonna roll over. He's got. I, I don't know when you're when you're on the hook for murder and Dad's got well, the evidence. Maybe it won't be. Maybe it won't be low. Like Dad's rushing you out maybe to the fucking private planes so you can get out of the country. Mm -hmm. Like you can't really go back on that. Dad, Dad's really got you in his back pocket. And shout out to my man Tom. Marriage off to a rough start. <laughs> Tom. That when one. your wife's in her wedding dress saying, yeah, I think I want to fuck other people. <laughs> it's not exactly how you want to start things off. So succession. I wish you told me the that most, before the marriage. <laughs> the most dysfunctional, power-crazed family on television right now. Uh, also, this is this didn't really come into play last episode. Oh, yeah, by the way, la it, was, it was fucking hilarious when the, uh, when Rome, Romulus, He'd been setting up his fucking rocket ship. He'd mm -hmm. been working on that rocket launch and been like kind of puffing his chest out that he's in charge of the rocket launch or the, the satellite launch, and thing blows up on the deck, right? And then, and he's freaking out because he's like, he's like, I may have. He's telling uh, what's her name, Jerry. Mm -hmm. uh, he's like, he's telling Jerry. He's like, I may have sent some emails saying fuck safety regulations. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get this off. We need to get launchers on Shiv's wedding day because I thought it'd be a nice present for her. And Larry goes, "Well, you're looking at corporate manslaughter." <laughs> and, and then when they when they finally find out that no one actually died, that two guys lost a thumb and one guy lost an arm that they might not be able to reattach, and he like he celebrates. He celebrates. Like, he celebrates. Yeah. He's like, so, "We're not canceling the party for a couple fucking thumbs." <laughs> Rome is, uh, I, I've said it, it's, a, it's a TV show of many unlikable characters, but if there's one guy I get a fucking kick out of. He's the best. Is he gay? I, that's, I mean, I think he's I think everybody, I think everybody's, everybody's on the Kinsey scale. scale. Every, everybody's on gay, the scale Tom's, for sure. Greg and Tom are fucking. That's what I'm dude. telling you. It is the most dysfunctional family on television, except for the family in the new season of The Center. Season two of the center. Well, they're not even a family, it's a cult. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that opening scene with that little fucking kid. Something, you know, one of the scariest things to me, little kids. You know, like monsters and goblins and ghouls, whatever. You give me like a creepy little kid who's just like quietly like poisoning you and shit. <laughs> Ooh, buddy. And now I, coming into the season in the center, I, I didn't realize it was an anthology series. I thought we were gonna be right back into the Jessica Beale fucked up family situation. She's 
no longer acting. Now she's just the executive producer. I wasn't sure how I was gonna handle that until I heard my girl Carrie Coon was in it. I will watch anything with Carrie Coon. I was wondering anything. where she was the whole time. She Fargo, didn't come in done. until the very end. Leftovers, done. You put her in the center, done. You put her on any TV show right now, I will watch it. Did you think that, did you think that, that was like her, his real family? Yeah, I mean, off the bat, you know, you don't, you're you don't know. You're, yeah, you're not. Dude, what, what is he, a fucking Boy Scout? How the hell do you go outside and you know what roots are going to kill mom and dad if you that put in some crazy. coffee? That, that, I mean, I, maybe we'll explain some of this along the way. It seemed, did seem a little ridiculous. Yeah. But man, those little... <laughs> they were, that was some serious acting. Yo, big That time. was fucking... Was like, that, did they just like poison you? What, what they, they, they were going to come kill, go kill the kid? I mean... That, that show, show, show is that fuck, show's so, uh, like, so dark and so fucked up that like, it can go absolutely anywhere. I know, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Like every Wednesday, you don't know what's gonna happen. Fargo, uh, the show Carrie Coon was on. I think the best anthology series going right now. Chris Rock joins the cast. I don't know about I that. I don't know about this either. Has, no, has no. Chris Rock, can we, can we get, has Chris Rock ever done something like serious? I, like, he did like The Five, I think. Something like that, five year something. Is five year it, engagement. Five, no, 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 five year engagement. No, was, uh, uh, why did I get married or some shit? Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. even that, I think, is like a comedy that's like based in, you know, like right, right. Yeah. Drive, and that's about it. I mean, the, Fargo has very little comedic relief here and there, but for the most part, you're talking about like grisly, dark murders and violence. And it's now, it's been, I think it's like the hot thing in the streets the past like five, six years now, starting with True Detective, like the anthology idea where you're going to add on, um, you know, <laughs> big actors are going to join the show and mm -hmm. kind of like, it kind of gives you a chance to McConaughey it, where all of a sudden you're taken seriously. Or Vince Vaughn, I'm the funny guy. Now all of a sudden I'm doing, uh, you know, this, well, this type of shit. Didn't, didn't really work out. Did not work out for Vince Vaughn. Uh, we'll see what Fargo can do. I feel like this, no matter what, though, is a little bit too much of a stretch. I think, you know what, after watching Chris's new um, special, Tambourine, he actually might have the serious in him. You want to know why? I bet he does, but it just, you know, until you do it, it's... It's gray hair and glasses. Mm, he He's does have that distinguished now. look now. Yeah, he, yeah. Like, he looks like a guy... But you know be... what my main problem is going to be? Is like the, like the, the voice, the cadence. He's always like... You know, yeah, like he's, he's so over the top with his like women be shopping. He, you know, it's like supposed to be the uh, how, how come every time? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like is is this like this such... something you're supposed to do? Look that at was, this dead body. You that, know? Was, that was Michael Scott as Chris Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, we'll see. I mean, I I really trust Fargo way more than uh, True Detective because Fargo is tried and true several seasons now, and every time they knock it out of the park. Uh, so I, I don't think you sign up for something like this if you're in that over your head. So we'll find out. Uh, also, maybe Chris Rock will do one of LeBron James' show because it seems like LeBron's doing 55,000 TV shows. It's, I mean, are you going to even play basketball, bro? He's got if you're a fan out. of the got Lakers, how can, out. You, how can you, like, think, okay. I mean, he has... How do you not realize he's not here for basketball? Though. He has a prize show, a million-dollar prize show on CBS. He has the cartoon... He has the one on HBO, of the barbershop. Mm -hmm. He has one on Showtime, a documentary series called Shut Up and Dribble. That's four shows LeBron's And then he does, like, all this shit, like, social media uninterrupted stuff. He's got, I mean, that's, like, this all just, I like, would guess one, the uninterrupted is going to stop, though. Because, uh, oh, at least, you know, it's, like, it's the barbershop brought to you by uninterrupted yeah. owned by Bleacher Report. But I would guess that they're going to start putting less on social media and just, okay, this is going to go to the half-hour show. We will see. I mean, LeBron is uh, Dude, not, that, he ain't here for basketball. In the, bottom one, line. the one clip released to the barbershop, when it's fucking Draymond, LeBron, Skylar Diggins? No, I think it's, um, yeah, whatever. Um, what's, his, what's his guy's Maverick Carter. <laughs> Maverick Carter, what a fucking scam artist. And Mark, Snoop Dogg. And John, John Stewart. Stewart. That fucking took me out. It was like, that was, like the camera was panning, and then it was like, boom! White oh, Jewish guy. There's on, a little on Jew. The, on, on. <laughs> <laughs> we talked to Tony Rock about having your black card. John Stewart. Black card. Yeah. yeah. Full <laughs> fucking membership to the club. Big time black card. Um, so, yeah, I mean, be on the lookout for LeBron James, the TV director, actor, documentarian, and maybe occasionally you'll watch him play basketball. <laughs> We got Rob Cordry on uh, on the show today to talk about uh, his life in Ballers and Hot Tub Time Machine and all that other good stuff. Um, Ballers is a is, is Ballers is entourage for sports, and the most important part of Ballers is not even the show. It's not even the acting. It's the theme. 
I think we're in the building now. Fuck with Hollywood, yo, get that top one song right here. Fuck with the top one song of all time right here. Hollywood shows. And I want to tell you something that you probably should know. This that slum dog millionaire by All right, it's another edition of KFC Radio. We are joined live in the flesh by Rob Cordry. What's going on, man? What's up, everybody? You're looking This is my flesh. It's a packed room here. I dressed up for you guys. You're looking good. I like the tan suit. But I thought, like, I wouldn't wear the tie so I could still relate. Okay. You know? Yeah, like, if you had the tie, you Gonna walk in and be like, loser, yeah, pop yeah. the tie off. Like, uh, You're I think cool. You now. guys would get intimidated by me. I, I took the tie off because I was like, I'm an everyman now. You <laughs> are, dude. You absolutely are. That's good. Well, hard. you do, you, you very much keep it real. And I feel like Ballers and Hot Tub Time Machine and these type of shows are really what. And movies. And, and movies are what the fans and viewers like. That's what it's all about to me. Uh, yeah, they're not like. Um, they're not head scratchers. They're not like thinking man's uh No, but they're uh, not, that's it's not like a knock on it either. It's just no, like no, no, this I, is I, what I agree. It's like um it's a it's a there's a common denominator to it. Yeah, it's it, I love doing stuff like that. Yeah, too. we don't exactly do thinking man stuff around here. <laughs> no, so. Why bother, man? Yeah, it's so much harder. Hard. Yeah. And God, stupid. It's stupid. Yeah. I yeah. mean, and that's so what we're doing today is we're going to present you with the people's Oscar. You uh, we are the the people's choice, the people's Oscar for I accept. the yes. I, as, as on behalf of Barcelona Sports, we I present accept. Rob Corddry. I'd like to thank my agent, uh, my lawyer, uh, my wife, my dear wife. Of course, oh, God, third, I almost forgot her. Third one, I almost come forgot on. her. In the doghouse for a fake award show on a dumb <laughs> podcast. His wife's gonna be like, "Did you really thank me third on that fake award on KFC Radio?" Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's like Ballers is we when it first came out, we were always kind of talking about how it is the. Like entourage of sports, yeah, and and that is like entourage is just like beloved for a reason. Ballers is beloved for a reason, and it's it's everything you. It's like sports mixed with partying, mixed with drama, humor. It's yeah, it's fun. Like, it's good cameos too, yeah, and like yeah. and you guys being in the sports world. I mean, it's written specifically for you. You know, you so. knocked it out of the park. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, um, but uh, but it is weird though how odd the fans are sometimes. Like that, that we like. Senator Elizabeth Warren, uh, it's her favorite show. Really? <laughs> I would not have seen that coming. No, <laughs> oh, the first page of her of her of her new book it, it says uh, it says she she like ba- she loves ballers. It's come favorite. on, wow, it's crazy. And I actually had the opportunity to ask her why. <laughs> um, and she's like the fiscal policy senator, so yeah. she was like. It's just different people at stages of their careers and having made money and, and having lost money or or just made money for the first time. And and it really made sense to me. I was, was like, going to say, oh, that I makes can, a lot of see sense. see why you would like this yeah. show, yeah. That is, is that what it's about? Because I had no idea. <laughs> it is a deep, it's a thinking man show. <laughs> I guess so. Lizzie thinking Warren, man, who yeah, knew? The good senator from Massachusetts. <laughs> the uh, It doesn't hurt that you are basically partners in crime with The Rock. Uh, I feel like Dwayne Doesn't, never hurts. Never hurts, man. Never hurts, if, no. if you're gonna uh, hit your wagon to somebody right now, I feel like he's the guy. Yeah, I would say if for anybody that uh, to give advice to anybody that's trying to get into show business, I would say try and do a show with uh, The Rock. <laughs> Um, what's, the, what's the secret? I, uh, work with Dwayne Johnson every yeah, time he does something. Just try and do as many shows with him as possible, and you know you'll make it. He really will. I mean, he is he, everything he touches. <laughs> it's right. Turn, it, uh, I've always heard. You know, I saw a skyscraper this weekend. By the uh-huh. way, everything I wanted. I it's amazing. It's amazing. Rampage, amazing, right? Rampage is an American classic. I mean, that is. I just watched on a plane. Um, uh, uh, the the uh, earthquake one. Was it called earthquake? San Andreas. Oh. San oh, so Andreas. It really should be called. It should be called earthquake, like dinosaur and skyscraper. It like, should be just, called. Rob Corddry candy because I, I was like practically licking the Dude, screen. That's my guy. Yeah, I always get shit because people I like movies like that and people kind of give me give me the business sometimes. Like it's incredibly entertaining for an hour and a half. That is what All I need, need in this of world. Of course, I, like I like, I'm looking forward to seeing the the new Mission Impossible, mm-hmm. which I fantastic. can't imagine is any different from the former <laughs> Mission Impossibles. <laughs> How what? is he ever gonna get this mission done? This mission yeah. seems, it seems impossible. impossible. <laughs> um, but like. It's just that that those kind of movies like um, oh no the the most recent Mad Max, 
Um, See, I Fury didn't Road. like that. I loved it because it was like non stop. Stop. Yeah, yeah, They're true. never. It never. Right when you think they didn't give you any time to breathe. But it was that that was too much. For too me. much for you. I need the Fast and Furious. I need the family connection. I need the Coronas. A little bit of love interest. Yeah, I need a little love interest. I need I need that. You the, need a the, B story too. Yeah, like this yeah, was yeah. just all A, A story, A story. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. I get I get a lot of shit for that too, thinking I'm an action movie guy who doesn't like Mad Max. That is people, you do deserve he's a, a lot conundrum. of shit for that though. <laughs> he, he's, he's got layers. I deserve to him. almost he's all got the layers. Shit I get. You are an onion, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think Hot Tub Time Machine is kind of one of those movies though where, you know, people obviously it's a preposterous uh, plot <laughs> and makes no goddamn I don't know sense. What you're talking about. Yet it <laughs> What do you mean? It's it's a true story, I thought, yeah. right? But, you know, I, I think that is one of the more, like, cult classic, beloved type of, if it's on TNT or TBS or FX, you always leave it on. Oh, that's great. Uh, enough to run that. it back for us. Is there going to be, like, a third? I feel like you could be, like, you could be like nine of those um, things. Just keep going. Yeah, Fast and Furious style. Seeing as though, like, Hot Tub 2, I think only you guys and my dad saw no it. No way. Really? Um, yeah. Not a lot no, of people. Okay. Let me, I'll solve your problem. Hot Tub 3 featuring The Rock. <laughs> that will do it. <laughs> that right? will do it. I mean, <laughs> uh, we always joke about um, wanting to do Hot Tub 3 when we're like 50 or 60 years old. Uh -huh. Actually, I'm almost 50, so I can't even say that anymore. Like 60, 65, yeah. 70. <laughs> you know, like, it'll be like the... Um, Wild Hogs. Of and that's yeah. exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Or the one uh, Morgan Freeman did in Vegas. Yep. Uh, there you go. Las Vegas or Going out in style. Or something old like old Men no, Rob a Casino. Vegas. Yeah. Or yeah, whatever. Yeah. 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 But the, so to, you were kind of talking about how you don't like to do the Thinking Man. You like, you like your, the shows you do. But I was reading your Wikipedia again, doing research, whatever. <laughs> and um, no big deal. You said like you, you credit Jon Stewart a lot for kind of teaching you how to take stuff, not seriously, but how to, how to find the humor in. Yeah. More difficult things. Yeah, and it's not like a formula either. It's nothing I can really describe in a satisfying way. It's more like just watching him work mm. was was the best um like a uh, uh, tutorial for writing a joke. You know? Yeah. Okay. Right. But he wouldn't but he wouldn't like explain it to you. You just kind of No, no, he, he, I don't know if he'd know how to explain I, it. I, either. I think it's one of those things like you know, Michael Jordan can't like tell you how to play basketball. He just like kind of does it. You know, you can give yeah. him tips and stuff, yeah. but you can't and I think explain. For, at the beginning, the, you know, when you're first learning, you'd be like, "Well, what would John do at this point? Mm -hmm. What would John? What would John's take be?" And then, you know, eventually, it's just your take, whatever you're coming up with. But it's um, it's more. Uh, uh, I don't know. He he gave me confidence. I think, yeah. you know, like I didn't have game, to right? be the smartest guy in the room. Yeah. Um, I everybody has a take. And your take is just as valuable as anybody else's, you know? That's interesting because we just had Tony Rock in here uh, yesterday, and he was talking about how There's when he does when he does stand-up sets at the Comedy Cellar and stuff like that, they have, like, the OG comics table. Mm -hmm. And he yeah. says he goes and stands over there and doesn't say anything right. because he doesn't want to look dumb. And it, it's yeah. almost the opposite. We're like, your take is worthless. It's not the same as mine. Oh, no. <laughs> That's, like, the hardest table. That's the yeah. hardest crowd in the world right, right. there. It's like... Yeah. Uh, you know, older comedians. He said it was like, like Colin Quinn, David Tell. Oh, forget like, it. Yeah. <laughs> forget it. Like, don't laugh. even open your mouth. Yeah. Just laugh. Yeah. <laughs> don't be a jerk. <laughs> um, working with The Rock is everything it seems to be. I mean, yeah, I, I think you like wanted to give, be. Us, give me like a bad story. Yeah, like, like, have, me, like, everyone's like, always like, no, even off camera, he's just as nice. Yeah, I'm like, uh, come dude, on. I, I like, mean, he I came wish... on to set one day wearing like a Make America Great Hag again. There's got to be some story where you're like, all right, The Rock's not a swastika tattoo. That's no, what he's really yeah. covering up under yeah, the exactly. Rama bill. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wish, I wish I had something good for you. I the worst thing I could say about the dude was that he was tired one day. Mm. <laughs> I was like, and it was That's really surprising, weird because he it does was, get up like four a.m. to no, lift. It was very strange. But I, then again, it was the night after the Oscars. I was in Miami shooting. Uh, it was Sunday night. I was watching the Oscars, and I could only um, I had to get to work at six o'clock the next day, so I I watched half of it. But right before I shot off the TV. Dwayne is on the TV. He's at the Oscars. And I was like, like Wait a motherfucker, you got to be at work in eight hours. <laughs> How are you doing this? And he was there. He was there. And, and he's a little bit sleepy, and everyone's like, what sleepy. the hell? Yeah. He was a little sleepy. It's, it's annoying following him, because he's like your friend from college who didn't get hangovers, where like he'll have like, <laughs> he'll have yeah, a post right. at like 2 a.m. of him being like, I love tequila. <laughs> and then it'll be That's so funny four, that that. four hey, hours man. later, he's like squat deadlifted like 8,000 pounds. Dude, that is so so funny you that's that that's my that was the like the crystallization of my character on, on Ballers. Ballers. I said this is that guy in your group of friends who can go all weekend and then still go to work on Monday and not even 
maybe be a little glassy eyed. Yep. But he's fine. Like that. That was That's the first real- thing I yeah. realized about my character was like he doesn't get hung over. <laughs> That's so funny. What a superpower! Yeah. Oh, it's the best. Yeah, pick one. Yeah, it's the I, best. I, one day there'll be a story about the rock. You know what? I, I know why you're doing. I don't this. know. You're, you're not. I know what you're doing here. You're just keeping it quiet because you're going to be the vice president on his ticket when he runs for president. <laughs> I get it. I see what's going on here. It's all political I, angling. It's going to be uh, Dwayne Rob 2020 or whatever. I loved watching that story like shoot out of control oh, immediately. <laughs> Real fast. <laughs> oh, man. Was Would he ever laughing about that? What? Would he get your vote? No. <laughs> no, no, no. No, not in a million smart, years. Smart, smart. No, come on, haven't we learned our lesson? I'm voting I'm right, voting you know for this, yes. the Washington Insider. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We tried this already. No. It didn't really go great. We need something book. different. Well, we haven't burned everything down yet, so I think it's working just fine. <laughs> yeah, no, forget it. No, no, no. The Oprah, <laughs> The Rock, no, no. go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I know you're a busy man. They, uh, they're telling us to wrap up here. But I do want to say that uh, the, the, I think the best part of Ballers, yeah. it's a fantastic show. The writing's great. You guys are great. The best part of Ballers is the opening theme for the first about 60 seconds. When they awesome, play right? Drake when and you Little get, Wayne right above it, it is Especially when it's right after the ten, ten, Game ten, of Thrones. Ten, 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 you know what? Your favorite it. character yeah. had just died. It, yeah. And then it's like, I'm so sad. You need a like, Game of Thrones bomb. Kane is in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes! I like my chicks in threes. Yeah, Yeah, there it is. It's like that that to me, it's like, okay, maybe I'll watch the rest of the show, maybe I won't, but that was awesome. It's a pretty good it's a it's a pretty good show open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, man, we uh we thank you for coming through. Thanks for having me. Keep making us laugh and keep doing those uh the people's the people's Oscars. Keep 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 up. I'm just about all all about the people. I wanna tell you something that you probably should know. This that slum dog millionaire Bollywood flowing up. I don't get shit confused. I'm on the slow circles. I like my chicks in twos. How about when uh how about when Rob Corder said uh I like my chicks in threes? I was like, good try, Rob. Good try, good try. Alright, that's it for watch this Wednesday. We'll see you guys next week. Any shows you want us to talk about, any topics you want us to talk about, anything and all things, TV, a little bit of movies, you let us know. We'll see you on Wednesday.